What's up YouTube? It's James coming back at you with another informative video. I hope you guys are doing well out there on this beautiful Wednesday. I'm doing pretty good myself. Well, what we have here is another tragic story. Um, we seem to be of no shortage of these type of stories these days. Who we have here is grandparents Clint Elwood on the right and uh, Lisa Jones on the left. Baby Jada Moore in the middle, okay? And what these two grandparents are actually locked up, that is, you know, for allegedly beating their granddaughter, Jada Moore here in the middle, to death, okay? Something about her basically keeps soiling herself, okay? Um, from what I understand about the story, they took her in, the baby, because they were helping their daughter out until she got herself together, okay? But uh, what I want to do here is for us to check out at least a series of three videos and then we'll get into the commentary. Cheryl, prosecutors saying in court that the physical abuse that ultimately led to the little girl's death began at least two and a half months ago, shortly after she moved in with them for what was supposed to be a temporary arrangement to allow her mother to improve her living situation back in Georgia. A five-year-old girl killed at the hands of her grandfather and his wife. That is what Cook County prosecutors said happened Friday night at this Park Forest home shortly before 11 p.m. when 62-year-old Clint Elwoods dialed 911 and told the dispatcher, and quote, I was beating my little granddaughter and now she is out of it. Identified as five-year-old Jada Moore, prosecutors say the little girl was found by police laying naked on a couch in the living room. She was rushed to a local hospital and then airlifted to Comer Children's Hospital, where she died Saturday. After about maybe 10 seconds of them being inside, the paramedics come rushing out with a little girl who appeared to be completely limp. I had never seen her, but I knew um, he had a grandchild, so I wasn't surprised to see a child there because I knew he had one. Following the discovery, police placed both Elwoods and his wife, 57-year-old Lisa Jones, in custody. The couple say investigators had taken custody of the girl on April the 5th to give her mother, who lives in Georgia, time to improve her situation there. Prosecutors say a post-arrest confession provided by Jones indicates the beating started about a month later, apparently provoked by several instances of the girl soiling herself, each one documented on a calendar found inside the home. Joyce Miller is a longtime friend of Clint Elwood's who came to court today wanting to hear firsthand what happened. It's sad. It's sad to see any, anyone. Um, go through a trial and tribulation, especially when it's regarding a baby. Now, because they are both charged with first degree murder and are facing a life sentence, the judge today ordered both of them held, excuse me, both of them held without bond. Their next court date is set for August the 2nd. What? Updating you now, the suburban grandparents charged with murdering their five-year-old granddaughter will remain behind bars. Clint Elwoods and his wife, Lisa Jones, were denied bail today. The couple called paramedics to their Park Forest home last Friday night because their granddaughter, Jada Moore, was unresponsive. We spoke to a family friend who is devastated. It's definitely not easy to lose a baby. And for his daughter, I hope and pray that she can muster through this whole ordeal. Uh, Clint and his wife are really good people. When you're not strong and you need help yourself, and he was trying to help his daughter. Police say both grandparents admitted to physically abusing the girl. And tonight we're hearing from the mother of a five-year-old girl who was beaten to death by her own grandfather. Nate Rogers has been following this tragic story out of Park Forest he joins us live with the latest. Nate? Yeah, that's right, guys. Um, Kimmy Elwood, um, who currently lives in Georgia, tells me earlier this year she was going through a rough time and was looking for more permanent housing and a job. Her father visited Georgia and agreed to keep her, her five-year-old daughter just for a couple of months. 
Just a couple of days ago, Kimmy says she received a call that she never thought she'd receive, that her father was accused of killing her daughter. Today, Kimmy is in Chicago and had to go to the medical examiner's office to identify her young daughter. I'm all out of tears. I look at him as a monster. I don't even want to carry his last name no more. This is 62-year-old Clint L. Woods and his wife, 57-year-old Lisa Jones, both charged with murdering their 5-year-old granddaughter, Jada Moore. Last Friday, L. Woods called 911 asking for an ambulance after allegedly telling a dispatcher, quote, I was beating my little granddaughter and now she is out of it. When police arrived, young Jada was lying on the couch naked. She was eventually transported to Comer Children's Hospital where she died. It happened inside the couple's home here along Osage Street in Park Forest. Court documents say detectives obtained a pair of children's shorts with underwear inside, both of which were soiled. Also, a calendar on the refrigerator detailing dates last month when Jada allegedly soiled herself. The medical examiner noted bruises, abrasions, and scars throughout her body, some of the scars consistent with a pattern of ongoing abuse. Jada also suffered bleeding on her brain. Her death was ruled a homicide by multiple injuries due to child abuse. Every time I talked to my daughter, my daughter was smiling and she was happy. She, she not, not that time has she ever said, mama, I'm scared. Mama, come get me. He's hitting me. They're beating me. Nothing, nothing like that. The court documents also say that the step-grandmother also admitted that they both um, allegedly beat young Jada. The grandparents are still in custody. They're being held without bond. We do know that they're back in court at the Markham Courthouse next month. The mother has set up a GoFundMe account to um, help get funding for funeral arrangements. She's trying to get her daughter's remains back to Georgia so that she can have a funeral. That's the latest from Park Forest. Nate Rogers, Fox 32 Chicago. Okay, first of all, condolences to the parents of baby Jada. Even though um, the grandparents here are the sole blame to what they did to this child, I do for the parents of this child, the mother and the father. There is no excuse because they said that they were trying to give uh, this woman, the mother of the child, time to get herself together. But what do you mean time to get yourself together? You were supposed to be together when you had this child. You and the man that made this child. Okay? First of all, that, I mean, that's first and foremost as far as I am concerned, you know. Now, when it comes to these two low lives right here, that is not how you discipline a child and you know it. He said that this baby had been bleeding on the brain, meaning that you had to be knocking her around with your fist or something, hitting her in the head and all that kind of stuff. You understand? So she had a problem with soiling herself. That was still no excuse for you to kill her. Both of you, you are two adults. Beating on a five-year-old child. There is no way to discipline a child. So therefore, I hope that they actually lock you up and throw the way, throw away the key. Okay, I really do feel that way. You understand? Because there's no excuse in this bull. No way, no how. It's just not. I mean, really. They supposed to be married, but they got two different last names. His last name is Elwood. Her last name is Jones. <laughs> Dysfunctional, right there. You understand? See, for parents that have sole custody of their children, the responsibility lies on them on where to keep their children far as out of the hands of danger. I do believe that the mother of this child right here had to know her father. You understand? But being that... Um, she's preoccupied in what it is she's involved in as to why she can't seem to get her thing together you understand what I'm saying she did not care about putting this child in the hands of her abusive father 
and this woman over here. And that's just what it is. It's a damn shame, man. You know, but like I said, the parents of this child bear just as much responsibility as these two low lowlifes right here that brung harm to this child and took her life. And that's just what it is. That's the way I feel about it. That's all I got on this one, people. I want you guys to tell me what you think about this particular situation. I am interested in hearing your thoughts in the comment section. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Okay? You support the channel by sharing the videos. You understand? And also, if you're feeling a bit generous, you can hit the cash app that's in the description box as well. This is James. And, uh, oh, please remember to live your life as though we are being watched. Simply because we are. This is James, and I'm out.